All right, this is uh, chapter 14 now, the behavior of the naughty, naughty gases. Section 14.1 has a couple of really important definitions and a couple of uh, ideas that you may or may not be familiar with. Some of it is review from chapter 13, uh, but some really important definitions and relationships that we need to start talking about. So, let's get down to business. There's the objectives and the definitions that I was talking to you about relate to the uh, second bullet here, the three factors that affect, gas, that affect gas pressure. So we've already learned about what ga gas pressure is in the previous uh, chapter. And we've defined that and described what causes gas pressure. Now we're going to come back and describe how other factors affect gas pressure, other ways that we measure um, gases, other ways that we describe them. And first we're going to talk a little bit about compressibility, which we've more or less talked about already. We've said that gases are made up of particles that are very far apart from one another. And because of that, it's easy, relatively speaking, to push them closer together because there's so much empty space between the particles. Uh, Gases, as you may know, expand to fill whatever container you put them in. If you squirt a little bit of gas into a very big empty container, the gas will spread out and expand to fill that entire container. Uh, in contrast to a liquid, for example, where you squirt a little bit of liquid into a container and it just falls to the bottom and that's the only part of the container that it fills up. It doesn't expand. So things that expand easily also compress easily, and that's gases, yeah? Compressibility, that last little bullet there, is a measure of how much the volume of matter decreases under pressure. So how easy it is to squeeze something. Um, we use the compressibility of gases uh, in uh, lots of uh, our everyday lives, uh, lots of aspects of our everyday lives. Um, there are airbags and cars and any other thing that is soft and cushiony often has a lot of air involved because you press on it, it squeezes and gets a little bit more and a little bit more compressed as you apply pressure. So when you sit on a foam cushion, it's pretty soft. When you uh, collide with an airbag in a car, it's not quite so soft, but it's a heck of a lot softer than the steering wheel. Uh, or the or the uh, windshield. Okay, so we have uh, all these empty spaces so we can squeeze the particles and that makes our collisions between objects uh, a little more tolerable. Um, and if you've done any physics before, you've uh, perhaps learned that what is really important about the softness of something during a collision is that it increases the length of time over which um, the change of velocity, the acceleration, occurs. It's changes of acceleration that kill you in a car accident or if you fall off a bridge or throw yourself off a building because, like me today, perhaps your technology <laughs> is conspiring to make your life miserable. This is the sixth attempt to make this video. I hope it's the last one. So lots of empty spaces between particles. We go back. Lots of empty spaces between particles. This little picture shows you more or less what air looks like with um, about 80% nitrogen and about 20% oxygen. The little red spheres uh, or double spheres because it's O2 would be oxygen molecules. And the distances between the molecules are pretty close to what you would expect for air at sort of a normal ambient temperature. So a lot of space between those particles. And that space, which is space, it's nothing, makes gases and anything that contains a lot of gas um, good insulators. Because in, when we transfer heat, which is what insulators are trying to prevent, the transfer of heat from one place to another, um, we cannot transfer heat through nothingness. 
um, heat will speed up the movements of particles. It will increase their average kinetic energy. That's what caused the temperature to go up. Or if you lose kinetic energy, that's what causes the temperature to go down. And so if you have something in between the warm parts, like your body, and the cold parts, like the air outside, um, then if that something is made up of gas, it has mostly empty space, and so very little heat will be transferred through that empty space because there's nothing there, no matter there, to transfer that kinetic energy to the outside. All right, four variables that describe gases, and we've already talked about pressure in the previous unit. We said that pressure was equal to the force applied divided by the surface area over which that force is applied. And we talked about the fact that gas pressure comes from the collisions of molecules against the walls of a container. And so anything that will increase the force of those collisions would increase pressure or anything that might decrease the surface area over which those collisions occur would also increase pressure since that's in the denominator. So we've already mentioned pressure and the source of gas pressure. Now we're going to relate these other three measurements of gases to gas pressure. And we've already talked about measuring gas volumes. We know that the molar volume of gas at STP for example, is 22.4 liters per mole. We, we know that we measure gases often in liters because they're not very dense, so it takes a decent amount of them to make up a significant mass. We uh, measure temperature in kelvins, and we talked about that in the last chapter as well. The kelvin temperature is the absolute temperature, and it's an absolute proportional relationship between average kinetic energy and kelvin temperature. So we always use the Kelvin scale when describing gases. And then the amount of gas, like the amount of any other type of matter, we describe in moles. So let's how, see how all of these things relate to each other. The first relationship is with the amount of gas and pressure. So imagine we have a container like a, like a scuba tank, and it has a certain amount of gas in it, and we double the amount of gas that's in the tank. Tank stays the same size, but we put twice the amount of molecules inside the container. Well, that means if we have twice the number of molecules, then we have two times the number of collisions between molecules and the walls of the container. That's twice as much force. And remember, our pressure equation, P is equal to force divided by surface area. If we increase the amount of gas, we're going to increase the force that is being exerted against the walls of the container, and therefore we will increase the pressure. Double the number of molecules, you double the number of collisions, and double the pressure. Um, this picture is a, a diagram from your book, and this is, uh, I think, an interesting little description of how aerosol cans work, and it's a pretty good and, I think, easy to understand description. These used to be more common when I was in high school than they are now, but you still see aerosol cans a lot. And if you ever wondered why the stuff squirts out of there when you push the button, this will tell you why. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. If you have curiosity, it's in your book, and you can check it out. Second relationship we're going to look at is between the volume of gas and pressure. And again, I think all of these relationships should be fairly logical. They should make sense to you. And if not, then you have a good reason to come see me during opportunity period. Um, the volume of the gas is going to be proportional. Remember our pressure equation, force over the surface area, the surface area is the surface area over which the force is applied, 
and if the denominator grows if the volume increases in other words the same number of particles will be spreading their force over a larger surface area if the denominator goes up then pressure goes down right if the surface area is decreased in other words if the volume of a sample of gas is decreased then the pressure would increase because the force stays the same same number of particles hitting against the walls and the surface area gets smaller if your denominator is smaller then the overall pressure is going to increase okay so now we have an inverse relationship right the first one was direct and linear relationship between pressure and number of moles of gas now we have an inverse relationship because if we double the size of the container the force is being spread out over twice the surface area and so the pressure will be half and this is an illustration to show the third relationship between temperature of a gas and its pressure and the first cylinder shows a sample of gas pressure 100 kilopascals temperature 300 kelvins if we double the temperature to 600 kelvins well if we're using Kelvin scale the temperature is a direct measurement of the average kinetic energy of the particles so if we've doubled the temperature to 600 then each particle on average has twice the kinetic energy so what does that mean about each of the collisions between the particles and the walls of the container twice as much kinetic energy in the particle means twice as much force when that particle collides against the walls of the container so we have another direct relationship here and as long as you use the Kelvin scale that's a linear relationship if you double the Kelvin temperature you will double the pressure that that gas is exerting on the walls of the container um, there are a couple of questions there throwing an aerosol can into a fire well if you take that temperature from whatever the relatively low ambient temperature is maybe 295 degrees or 295 kelvins and then you put it into a fire where the temperature may be six seven hundred kelvins you more than double the temperature pressure inside that can may go up to two and a half times and that be maybe more pressure than the walls of that can can take and it explodes doesn't have to but it could um, the last bullet says when should your tires uh, on your car the pressure on the tires be checked and this is more written for people who live in temperate zones when the uh, temperature in the winter is much colder than the temperature in the summer and uh, people that live in cold climates where they have warm summers and cold winters know that when it starts cooling off they have to add some air to their tires to keep the pressure up because when the temperature goes down the pressure of that same amount of gas in the tire will be less and the tires will look like they're getting flat that's it for 14.1 um, there are some good diagrams in your book I threw a couple of those on the uh, slideshow here but there's some good diagrams in your book make sure you understand the relationship between pressure and those three other measurements for gases temperature volume and number of moles see you guys soon